Amir, thank you so much for joining me and having a conversation with me today. I'm very excited to learn about Acra and what you guys are doing in the space. So to kick us off, could you give us a little background on who Aqua are and what you're kind of doing in leading the, the cloud storage space? Sure. So uh, hello everyone, my name is Amir Jerby. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Aqua Security. We st I started Aqua uh, seven years ago, uh, so we, we are a young company. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started Aqua in order to help organizations to move to the cloud. What we've seen is that many organizations are starting to adopt DevOps and cloud native mentality, meaning developers are writing a lot of code and pushing that code on daily basis to the cloud. Yeah. And it doesn't allow enough room and enough space for security teams to look at the code, to make sure that everything is secured, hardened, that there are not it, no, no many issues in the, in the code and the deployment. So there was a need for something that does security automated, uh, helping them move to the cloud in a faster way, without any friction, without dependencies with, between teams. Yeah. So what Aqua is doing, we are integrated, we are a platform, we integrate ourselves with the application lifecycle development. We help developers build code that doesn't have vulnerabilities, code that is secure. Mm -hmm. And we also help operations team making sure that what, what they are running inside of the cloud accounts doesn't have any issues, doesn't have any vulnerabilities, malware, any configuration issues. And at, at the end of the day, we are, we are making sure that your development to production process yeah. is secured and no one can get inside of your applications. Amazing. Very important to have. We're seeing this a lot in organizations at the moment. The, the cloud move over the past two years has been huge and even before that. And we're going to keep seeing that growth going forward. Now, one thing I was interested in, because you have your talk coming up tomorrow, and wish you the best of luck with that. So we have a hybrid model kind of coming aboard of a lot of companies. We're seeing a lot of apps and a lot of tools being used, which may not have the security needed because it's unprecedented really, isn't it? So how, what kind of threats are we seeing from this new kind of model of work and how people are interacting with the cloud and their tools? So what we are seeing, you know, in the last five years, more and more companies are moving their applications from on-prem where they use one set of uh, patterns of security. Now they are moving into the cloud and they need to adapt, they need to change. Yeah. They need to look at their applications different ways. And what we are seeing is that in order to secure the cloud, the cloud is not one thing that you secure. As an example, if you run your code on AWS, you have 150 different services out there. Yeah. Each and every one of them needs different tuning and different kind of security measurements and controls. Yeah. So what we are seeing, we are seeing lack of knowledge. So people are taking their applications, just running them in the cloud and thinking that maybe now it's done. Maybe I just run it and I don't need to do any tuning. And the truth into it is that you're not done. Yeah. When you're running your applications in the cloud, you need to understand what are the controls that you are getting out of the box and what are the controls you need to configure and set up yourself. Yeah. So what we did in the last year, we, did, we ran through a research of understanding what are the applications that are currently being built and running in the cloud. We've examined more than a thousand different scenarios of customers and, and prospects. And we've seen that 90% of them are actually exposed to breaches, right? Oh yeah. And, and the reason is you take your application, you run it. If you don't understand what you're doing and you don't understand how to secure it, you're, there, there are issues out there, right? Yeah. So as a result of the, this survey, we, we started looking at, okay, so 90% are now exposed. How much time does it take them in order to fix the issues that they have? Very right? true. Yeah. And we found out that from time that they identify that there is a problem until time they fix that problem, this is another 60 days, right? So long time, long time for exposure, right? Yeah. Out there for your application running somewhere exposing maybe secrets, maybe data that you don't want other people to see, Yeah. right? Uh, so th those are some of the challenges that we are seeing, and this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to help those organizations to understand what are the risks that they have and how can they fix those issues quickly. Very true, and seeing how quickly they come in, and as you say, if they stay on the system for 30, 60, 90 days, the damage is, you know, 
not irreversible, but it's going to do a lot of lot of issues. So, talk to me about some of the threat vectors that we are seeing being attacked on the cloud. What what are we, what should organizations be looking for? So the highest risk is misconfigurations. So this is what we see across the board. Right. Like I said, there are more than 100 services when you run your application in the cloud. You need to tune each and every one of them. And what we see is that, that now, these days, with the power shifting left to developers, so developers can just write their code, move it to, you know, publish it into the cloud. And when you do that, yeah. you have tuning that you need to do for all of those services, or a lot of configuration that you need to do. Yeah. We see that as a number one risk. People misconfiguring, not understanding that their application might be exposed to the internet, not understanding that they are using other permissive applications. Mm -hmm. And the result is, your application is running, like you're happy, everything is running okay, yeah, but yeah. you just open yourself to an attack waiting to, be, to happen, right? Because you misconfigured something. Right. Yeah. So that's the number one issue we see. You know, it, it's it's across the board. Okay. No, yeah, well, that's interesting, and and obviously the solution that you guys are bringing in and are helping to stop that misconfiguration, right? You're hoping to kind of reduce that so much more. So just to wrap up here, if you have any examples or um, areas that you want to discuss that kind of reduces that misconfiguration and really sets the scene, that would be really helpful. Yes. So one thing that we do do with many of our customers is. Uh, we are shifting left, left and helping developers to understand that before they push code into the cloud, before they run their application, if they can run a scan and examine the application that they've just built, they can identify risk before it happened and they can fix it while developing the code, right? Okay. So this is a key part of our solution, shifting left, doing those assessments of uh, security issues as you are developing your code. Yeah. And I can tell you that, you know, if you are a developer, you are trying to build your code, you got an issue that right now did not allow you to run the code in production, you, you fix it. Yeah. You, you take a day, you take two days, you don't wait the 60 days that I told you about uh, when the code is already running in production, you, you fix it. If this does not happen, right, if you don't do that, if you don't check for issues at development stages, the outcome is that you have now breaches, out there in your cloud, like I said, 60 days until you fix it, yeah. right? So uh, it can it can be impactful for organization, and, and most time they don't even know that they have been attacked. Yeah, so shifting true. left security into the developers. Stuff. Well, Amir, I can wish you the best of luck. It's uh, been fantastic to talk to you, and thank you for talking to us today. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Amir.